for every project, I'd open the same apps, resize windows, and put everything in its place over and over again. I got tired of it. For example, when I'm video editing, I always need the same software, the same folders, and the same video editing tips that I saved in my notes app, all perfectly arranged. So I thought, what if I could create a perfect workspace for every task, save it, and then with a single click, bring it all back. I'm going to try and build that system in this video. Let's see if it's even possible. I decided to use PowerToys workspaces to save and reuse specific app layouts. I plan to create three main workspaces for my most frequent tasks, scripting, editing, and productivity. For scripting videos, I typically use Notion for the script itself and Apple Notes for quick references on the site. I also keep a browser window minimized ready for any quick research I might need to do. To set this up, I opened the PowerToys Workspaces editor, clicked Create Workspace, then Capture. I then removed the PowerToys window, checked Create Desktop Shortcut, and I made sure to check the Move Existing Windows option. This ensures that if the apps are already open, PowerToys will simply move them into place. I closed all the apps and launched the scripting workspace. It worked. Next, I set up a productivity workspace for my calendar and to-do list, my productivity apps. I hoped PowerToys would remember its virtual desktop, but it didn't. On top of that, my to-do list app wouldn't resize or move correctly, and its UI was glitching out. To figure out if PowerToys or the app was the problem, I set the window position to maximized in PowerToys. When it launched, maximized, I knew the issue was with the to-do app itself, not PowerToys. After a lot of troubleshooting and research, the fix ended up being surprisingly simple. A computer restart. The real challenge came with my video editing workspace. I primarily use Premiere Pro and File Explorer, open to specific folders, like my projects, video assets, and icons. I use other folders, of course, but these are my most used. I positioned the File Explorer window to be able to easily drag files into the Premiere Pro timeline or project folder, and I created the workspace. When I launched it, the File Explorer window was very small and misbehaving. The resizing is not working correctly. This immediately exposed two major limitations with PowerToys. First, it couldn't save multiple File Explorer tabs, only individual windows, and even worse, it didn't recognize the specific folders I had open within those windows. My workaround was to open separate file explorer windows for each specific folder I needed and then layer them perfectly on top of each other. If I want to keep my hands on the keyboard, I could use the win plus number shortcut to scroll between these windows. I accidentally enabled an OBS plugin in this part that follows the mouse movement. So you'll get a sort of cameraman's POV for a bit. So sorry for that. I then had to manually paste each folder path into the command line arguments. Even after doing that, I still encountered problems. The windows were too small and sometimes the projects folder wouldn't open at all. I noticed it was consistently the first file explorer instance that misbehaved. So to get all three folders to appear, I opened an extra empty file explorer window to trick PowerToys into opening all the others. But then I actually realized that the source of the problem was for some reason the move existing windows option and it was causing both problems. So I unchecked it and removed the fourth window since I didn't need it anymore. A new problem appeared which is that sometimes one window out of three would not be sized correctly but that's a minor annoyance that I can live with. At this point my workspaces window has gotten too cluttered from all the testing so I spent a bit of time to clean it up. I then revisited my scripting workspace to see if I can make it even better. My goal was to have Notion launch directly to a specific document. I first tried using the web version of Notion, pasting the documents link into the command line arguments. But while Notion opened, it didn't land on the specific document I wanted. I then attempted to save the workspace with the native Notion app already open to the desired document. This seemed to work initially, however, I soon realized PowerToys wasn't actually saving the specific document. It was simply Notion's own restore tabs feature that made it appear as if it was. This meant PowerToys couldn't natively save specific documents within an app. Since I could easily find the document using Notion's search feature, I moved on. My next goal was to assign specific apps to open and specific virtual desktops. I wanted Notion Calendar and To Do to open only on my productivity desktop, 
Premiere Pro on my video editing desktop and Notion on my writing desktop. Apps like browsers and file explorer, however, needed to remain flexible and open on any desktop as I use them across multiple tasks. My next idea was to use virtual desktop, a command line tool I found on GitHub. It looked promising, especially its move window to desktop command, which seemed perfect for assigning apps to specific workspaces like Premiere Pro to editing. After struggling with it for a while, I finally got it to move simple apps like Notepad by following an exact example from its documentation. However, it consistently and frustratingly failed to move more complex applications like Premiere Pro, even after 30 minutes of troubleshooting. This approach proved too unreliable. At this point, I felt like I was completely wasting my time and that this video would have to be scrapped. I was about to give up entirely. There was still one glimmer of hope. Glaze WM, a window manager that automatically tiles open windows side by side. However, I strongly disliked its default behavior. For instance, when I use Quick Look to preview files, I expect a small centered window, not one forced into a tiled section of my screen. While Glaze WM does allow you to configure individual windows to float meaning overlap each other, I tried that before and it's simply too much of a hassle to set up for every single app. Despite this, Glaze WM offered a compelling solution to my virtual desktop problem with its workspaces feature, which lets you assign apps to open only in a specific workspace. But then I wondered, what if I could use Glaze WM's workspaces without the tiling behavior? I could then use the app template but saved in PowerToys to quickly launch my apps already arranged exactly how I liked. This seemed pretty achievable, so I decided to go for it. After digging through Glaze WM's GitHub page and documentation, I found my answer. I could set Glaze WM's default behavior to floating instead of tiling. This meant my windows would act normally just as they would without any window manager, while still letting me leverage Glaze WM's powerful workspaces feature. To do that, I right-clicked Glaze WM's icon in the system tray, opened the config folder, and edited the config.yaml file. I recommend you use VS Code for editing the config file, but Notepad works too. I scrolled to the window behavior section and changed initial state to floating. After reloading the config and restarting Glaze WM, app windows finally acted normally. However, I immediately hit a weird, annoying bug, pill-shaped windows. This made windows super small or even prevented them from launching completely. The true power of Glaze WM for my needs lay in its window rules. These rules let me automatically sort windows into their respective workspaces. Their example shows that I can clearly do that. They assigned browsers to workspace 1. I opened the config.yaml file again, used Ctrl F to find the workspaces section and changed the first three default workspaces named 1, 2, and 3 to match my power to his workspace scripting, editing, and productivity. Glaze WM allows windows to be targeted in three ways. First is by process. This is the application's executable name, visible in task manager. You will want to remove the .exe in Glaze. Second is class, a more specific identifier often found using a tool like Auto Hotkeys Window Spy. And third, title, which is the text displayed in the Windows title bar or on the taskbar. You can also combine these criteria for more precise targeting. I then opened the config.yaml file, navigated to the window rules section, and used the exact code block from their example. I made sure it was properly indented with tabs. For my scripting workspace designated as workspace 1, I added a rule to automatically move Notion and Microsoft Edge to it. Microsoft Edge is the browser that I run the Apple Notes web app on. It's important to note that you can't target specific web apps, only the browser that runs them. To apply changes to the config, you can simply press Alt, Shift, and R to reload it. And if you ever need to manually move a window, just click on it, then hold Shift plus Alt and press the number of the workspace you want to move it to. To save you the headache and to avoid a lot of problems I encountered later on, don't rename your workspaces directly as I initially did. Instead, use the display name property under each workspace's definition. It works perfectly without causing errors. But then I faced a new challenge. Notion didn't move to its aside workspace. I tested Glaze WM's example rule for browsers by moving Chrome and Edge to workspace 4 and that worked 
perfectly, confirming my general setup was correct. The problem was specific to my notion rule. After much trial and error, I discovered the crucial detail. Glaze WM is case sensitive when matching process names. If a process has an uppercase letter in task manager like notion.exe, it must be written the same way in Glaze WM's config. So I simply changed the N in Notion to a capital N and it worked. I also learned how to use the pipe operator to match multiple apps within a single rule, which requires using regex instead of equals as the matching criteria. I then applied the same process to my editing workspace for Premiere Pro and after to the productivity workspace. Here, Microsoft To Do proved problematic. It kept showing up on every workspace's taskbar, even though the app itself only opened on the productivity workspace. My research indicated this issue is linked to an app framework called UWP, which To Do uses. I decided to live with this minor visual inconsistency for now. Another glitch I encountered in the productivity workspace was windows getting tiled instead of floating. It turned out ChatGPT had mistakenly added a set tiling command to that specific workspace's configuration when I was fixing another problem before. Once I removed it, the workspace behaved as expected again. My final plan was to combine PowerToys workspaces to launch my app layouts with Glaze to automatically sort them into their appropriate workspaces. I pinned the workspaces shortcuts to my taskbar and I launched the shortcut for the productivity workspace. The apps launched and Glaze moved them. But the tiling wasn't exactly as I had specified. To get the right positioning, it sometimes needed a second click. To get my primary productivity workspace to launch automatically when I start my computer by right clicking the workspace, creating a shortcut for it and moving it into the shell colon startup folder. This is a special Windows folder that will run the apps inside it on computer start. I also added a Glaze WM shortcut to that same folder. After a restart, Glaze WM launched and my productivity workspace appeared, though Microsoft To Do was still inconsistent. To try and ensure everything was correctly placed, I ended up adding a second productivity workspace shortcut to the startup folder. For video editing, it was still better to switch to the editing workspace before launching the Power Toy shortcut. The advantage of Glaze is now apparent. I mean, just look at how fast I can switch between workspaces compared to virtual desktops. I initially thought I'd fixed the problem of apps launching at incorrect sizes or failing to open by defining exact pixel dimensions in Glaze WM's window rules for specific apps like File Explorer and Zen Browser. A tip I found by asking Devin AI in Glaze WM's wiki. This allowed me to force them into a usable size on my 4K resolution monitor, though it took some trial and error to find the optimal values for my monitor. If I was to use this method, I'd have to apply these custom sizing rules to any other problematic app. However, these rules ultimately created more problems. The taskbar became unstable, thumbnails were cut off, and Windows refused to maintain consistent sizes or even launch at all. Apps meant for a specific workspace would appear everywhere. Clicking an app or alt tabbing wouldn't bring it to the foreground. Switching apps could also unexpectedly bring others forward with it. And taskbar items would even flash erratically on hover. All these problems eventually forced me to give up on this idea and stop using Glaze WM for now. If you know how to fix these issues or have better tools, please tell me in the comments. Or Maybe the developers will make it work better for this kind of setup in the future. If there's enough demand, I might even create a more comprehensive and user-friendly tool myself. I need testers, so sign up for my newsletter to stay updated.